All right, welcome back to our Stanley Cup playoff previews. First of all, apologies that I didn't do any round two previews on my channel. I was on vacation. Didn't really have much time to do anything else. So here we are with third round previews. First of all, the second round was sadly, in my opinion, quite boring. And not going to lie, some of the games I didn't really watch, or even if I did turn the game on, it was background noise to me. Yeah, not many surprises, except for maybe Florida. I think the most entertaining thing had to be watching all the Toronto fans break down, all the memes, the We Want Florida stuff. Not going to lie, it's pretty funny, but here we are, Carolina and Florida for round three. Before we do get started, though, let's go over my bracket. All right, so... Yeah, here's my poor bracket, which doesn't look great. Yeah. Bold predictions are not really paying off. Ish. The West looks okay. I got Dallas and Vegas correct at least. The East looks completely messed up. And who can blame me, honestly? Stuff happens. At least I still have Vegas in for... Cup champion. I don't think that's out of the question at the moment. So I think it's at least close enough, right? All right. So now let's get back into our preview here with Carolina and Florida. The schedule is as follows here, as you see here. All games for Carolina and Florida will be at 8 p.m. Eastern time on various networks, TNT, Sportsnet, CBC, and TVA. And for the Dallas and Vegas series, mostly on ESPN, instead of TNT, and of course in Canada on Sportsnet and CBC. All right, so let's get into the preview here. Game one is on Thursday, which is today at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So Carolina Hurricanes, 52-21-9 and nine on the season, 113 points. They defeated the New York Islanders in six games, and they defeated the New Jersey Devils in five games. They have scored 40 goals and allowed 28 points. Leaders for Carolina, Sebastian Ajo, 10 points for him. Marchinook, 10 points. Jesper Faust, a nice pro season for him, five goals, eight points. Seth Jarvis, eight points. Jordan Stahl and Brent Burns, each with eight points as well. For goaltending, Frederick Anderson is undefeated in these playoffs so far. 5-0, 1.8 goals in the stat average, and a 9.31 save percentage. Ronta, likely the backup for this series, 3-2, 2.59 goals in the stat average, and a 6 save percentage. And Pyotr Kochetkov obviously will stay there as the third goalie. Power play for Carolina, 18.9%. Penalty killing, 90%. Again, defense looks pretty good for Carolina, just allowing 28 goals in 11 games. It's not bad. And the season series, 2-1 to one for Carolina. For Florida, 42-32-8 and eight on the year, 92 points. They just defeated the Boston Bruins, obviously the President's Trophy winners. And the record-setting point-getters, the Bruins in seven games, and they defeated Toronto in five. They have scored 40 goals and allowed 37. The point leaders for Florida, Matthew Kachuk, 16 points. What a postseason he's had. It's been a great listening to his press conferences as well. A lot of faith he has in his team. That's very good. Carter Verhage, 12 points. Brandon Montour continuing his stellar season with nine points. Barkov, great two-way player, nine points. Sam Reinhardt, eight points. And they're blessed with good goaltending, I would say, this postseason, despite what the numbers may indicate to you. With Bobrovsky, seven and two on the year, 2.82 goals since average, 918 save percentage. Yeah, the goals since average doesn't look particularly stellar, but he was great in that Maple that series against the Leafs. Alex Lyon, I think he's had a pretty good postseason as well, despite what the numbers tell you. He probably 
I don't know. Maybe potentially he could start a game here in Kansas Carolina. Wouldn't be out of the question. Power play for Florida, 20.7%. Penalty killing, 68.4%. And as I said, season series went to Carolina, 2-1. to one. All right, so let's go over some storylines before I go over my prediction here. Now, obviously, Carolina, I, it, it does seem that they are favorites here. I don't think anyone would be against that fact. I think Carolina has played a pretty good style of hockey, pretty good brand. Great. It sticks to their brand that they've been playing this entire year. And the defense looks good, despite their injuries to some big players like Andre Sveshnikov. For Florida, uh, definitely very interesting offseason, uh, postseason for them, as they've knocked off two very good teams, one of them 135-point season. So obviously Florida has their share of achievements that they've gotten this season. It's very interesting. They're very opportunistic, and Paul Maurice has done a great job coaching this team to this juncture. And I love listening to Paul Maurice's press conferences as well. They're quite interesting. And seeing that press conference with Bill Zito earlier, I think, yeah, sometimes seeing the, the general manager and the coach chemistry, I think it's very interesting. Now, yeah, if, with how Florida's been playing, why should they fall flat here, right? Now, a couple of things that we're going to talk about here. Carolina has not faced Bobrovsky this season, which is very interesting. They played with against Spencer Knight and Alex Lyons. So one thing is for sure, maybe they don't have that book on Bobrovsky yet. So it could translate to a quick start for Florida if Bobrovsky plays as well as he has. Now, for Florida, uh, the question comes into play whether uh, their style of play is sustainable. And obviously, Borowski, is his play sustainable? And is the opportunistic style of hockey that Florida plays sustainable? Now, it should be, but Carolina's defense will do their best to stop that, obviously. Now, offense-wise, I think it's been relatively even between these two teams. Carolina has had some breakout stars, like Jordan Martinuk, one of the best second rounds in recent memory, with 10 points in five games since New Jersey, which is very interesting. Although he probably won't win the Conn Smythe. But yeah, it's been a great story for him, though. Now, Carolina, I think, plays a brand of hockey where it's very full of depth, I would say. They don't need a star player. They don't really have one. It's just they pr they're producing throughout their lineup, and it's enough to keep up, that's for sure. Combined with their defense and their goaltending, it's a great brand of hockey. Now, Florida has their big guns, and... Matthew Kachuk, Carter Verhage, Barkov, Duclair. Now, another big story, Nick Cousins, I think, is, has been quite fun to watch as well. And although Aaron Eckblad isn't really getting the points, I think he's done very well defensively to keep Florida in these games, which are pretty close, and scored a big goal in Game 5 as well against Toronto. Now, some path to victories, I think, here for Carolina. I think all, all comes down to keeping their puck out of the net. And the penalty killing is superb. And defensively, if they can keep the games, I think, like to some more boring stuff that fans obviously don't want to see. Those 2-1 games, those 2 nothing, 3-1 games. I think that's how you beat Florida. For Florida, I think 
if you can throw Carolina off their game and get into some maybe higher scoring games, you know, maybe some sloppy games, get Carolina to kind of lose their cool, lose their cleanliness, so to speak. I think Florida has that chance there. Of course, a lot of the this battle might come to goaltending and Freddie Anderson against Andre Pesh, sorry, Sergei Bobrovsky would be pretty interesting. And both these goalies have been basically a big reason why they are here at this point. Although I would say that Florida has relied more heavily on Bobrovsky than Carolina has relied on Anderson. Now, obviously, there are a lot of mental aspects to the game as well. Carolina, I think they feel like they deserve to be here, obviously. And for Florida, they're on a roll. And they've beaten two top teams in the league. And why can't they knock off another one, right? It's very strong motivation if you can knock off three of the top five teams in the league. It's very, very fun. And at this point, I don't think Florida has much stress. It's just having fun, and having fun can translate to very good on ice performance. Now, so far, the Carolina has faced a very good goaltender in Sorokin, and they've, for New Jersey, they don't, didn't really have that star goalie, and they will face some tough goaltending here from Bobrovsky. They need to keep scoring. We've seen in past years that their uh, offense tends to dry up at times. So very interesting to see if Carolina can sustain their offense. And they need to. Now, this my prediction will come as a bit of a surprise to some of you. I, I am going to predict that Florida wins this in seven. And contrary to what I've said this entire time, I think it all comes down to potentially a coin flip. It's going to be a very climactic showdown. And I think Florida is up to the task. I think it's going to be as close as close can get. And then it might even come down to some game seven overtime or something like that. And Florida just ekes it out. Maybe it's just my heart talking, but I would like to see this. I would definitely like to see the Florida Panthers continue this somewhat of a Cinderella run, even though they won the President's Trophy last year. This year, they just seem like ultimate underdogs. No one predicted them to get this far. And certainly, I don't think a lot of people will predict that Carolina will lose this series. I mean, as close as close can get. So we'll see what happens here. Hopefully, you're excited for this series. I know a lot of you will probably not even watch this series, but it should be interesting. All right, so let me know who you think is going to win this series in the comment section below and tell me why, tell me how wrong I am, all that. You know the drill. Okay. So see you next time for our other preview for the Western Conference Final. See you then. Take care.